Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Eat hey, Tucker. Come on, your best. <laughs> Damn it. <man. laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. I don't care if you're in the hospital. Crawl to the state. Crawl there. It's like Jesus going to the temple. He's like, I got a whip. Get out. Get, Get out. out. The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood in his toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like get, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy Holy sh- too much cussing on this. I guess we didn't bleep it, so we got to turn it off. But I just, it just, it's. It... You pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my God! I have been assaulted when Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. (laughs) The story. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thanks to you. Cheers. Mm. Well, 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 good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I know my schedule got a little uh, mixed up today. I was supposed to do True Crime Tuesday uh, with Jenny Riley, uh, one of the mothers of one of the murder cases that I have covered, Um, but we got our wires crossed, so she's going to be here on Thursday instead. And so I was uh, writing an article, and then I realized this, those of you who watched Legal Vices this morning, he introduced you to a new case uh, with legal implications about a former bachelor, Clayton Eckert. Um, you guys know that I'm a trash TV fan. I actually really liked The Bachelor for a long time. I quit watching though because they had too many seasons. It just became too much. And I actually never saw Clayton Eckert's uh, season. So I'm very unfamiliar with him as a bachelor. I don't know any of the bachelor dirt. Uh, where he's concerned. However, um, I have become very interested in this case. He is involved in a paternity suit um, brought by a woman named Laura Owens. Now, a lot of channels will not tell you her name, will not talk about her because she has successfully intimidated people not to use her name uh, and to not talk about this. And in fact, she's currently targeting another smaller YouTube channel right now Uh, for covering this story. Uh, Let me be clear, Laura, you will not intimidate this reporter with legal threats. That will not happen. Anything you send to me, let me tell you this now, so you understand how this is going to work. If you send me an email or any communication, it will be monetized, it will be published, it will be shared with the public, uh, and you will not get away with intimidating me. Now, for YouTube, who, you know, this video I'm about to share with you is from a public hearing uh, at the Maricopa County Courthouse. It is a, it was public. Anyone could walk in 
And uh, when you request a recording of a public hearing, you are handed it by the court. And that's what happened here. Someone uh, asked for it, uploaded it to the internet, uploaded it to YouTube, but YouTube took it down because of Laura's repeated harassment and complaints uh, against the channel. Uh, this YouTube, let me explain. You will get notices from this person that she wants this taken down. Do not do it. <laughs> do not do it. Uh, this is a public hearing. We are entitled to watch it as members of the public in America. Our justice system requires transparency so that we can see what's being done uh, in our courtrooms. And this is in, by the way, we are also streaming on Rumble. So good luck, Laura, getting it taken down from Rumble. Uh, even though YouTube might cave to, you know, ridiculous demands, Rumble will not. Uh, so we are streaming live on both at the moment. And um, we'll see what happens. But we are going to watch Eckerd v. Laura Owens, November 2nd, 2023, in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, the... Video is up on Vimeo right now, which is the only place where you can find it. I believe that lawyer, or I think Dave Neal, who is the host of a Bachelor podcast and also has a YouTube channel, I think he did a stream with this about this video that is still up on YouTube. But you can't find the um, you can't find the whole video unless you go to Vimeo uh, because YouTube took it down because YouTube is asshole. But that's okay. That's not going to happen here. All right. So I don't think I need to get too much into the background of this case other than I'll give you the too long didn't read version. Okay. Um, this has been going on since May. Uh, Laura Owens contact after having a intimate moment with The Bachelor uh, after this was after the show. She called him. Uh, perhaps she targeted him. We, we do not know. Um, but she knew he was a realtor. And she called him and he took her to see some houses and then they had an intimate moment, which he says was simply oral. She says she got pregnant somehow with twins. And as of today, the update is that she says she is no longer pregnant with twins. Um, but that's interesting because during this hearing that we're about to watch, she claims she's 24 weeks pregnant. Now in Arizona, I've looked up the law uh, Arizona has a law that if you have a termination or a miscarriage after 20 weeks, you must have a fetal um, death certificate. So if she was pregnant, no longer pregnant, uh, we all need to know why, uh, what happened to the babies. So, and that, that could end up in a criminal investigation. Who knows? I mean, it, it seems like something that they should know. So we're going to go back to the November 3rd hearing. We're going to start watching this. And uh, yeah, let's just see, see what happens. His lawyer reminds me of uh, Camille Vasquez. Oh, oh, and by the way, this YouTube might need this for further clarification. Uh, this court hearing... Normally, this courtroom is live streamed, uh, but this one was not live streamed because uh, Owens made a request to the court not to live stream it, so the court granted it. But that doesn't mean that it's not public. It is public. If you go to Maricopa County and you request this, the recording, they'll give it to you. So this is perfectly public. I want YouTube to understand that, that this is a public hearing done in a public courtroom. Uh, and if you do not want people talking about you, do not file frivolous lawsuits with your name on them because they become part of the public record. And you can walk around screaming this. We want privacy. We want privacy. But if you're constantly putting yourself in the uh, face of the media by doing things like, oh, I don't know, uh, publishing articles at Medium with your face on them, which, yes, she did, uh, and with your story, then you cannot, and in fact, if you want to see that, that's here. This is an article that Laura Owens, under her own name, right here, right here, see? Laura Owens. I mean, she's not Beetlejuice or Voldemort, guys. You can say her name. Say her name. It's okay to say her name. Saying her name is not harassment. 
uh, she is going to claim that it is. She's going to claim, because that's what she does, she's going to claim that people talking about her putting herself in the public eye like this, including giving the media pictures of herself, posting her stories, her tall tales under her name, she's going to say us talking about it is harassment. Um, but it is not. <laughs> so here she is publishing on December 7th in her under her own name. Uh, so, you know, there, there, there's no argument here uh, for her to say that she is not, uh, that she's being harassed in any way by people using her name to talk about what she has done in public. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Actually, um, let me look at the worksheet really quick. One of them uh, isn't even one that I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it would, we'll do that one. Yeah. It, did you guys not have it? Yeah. It would have been. It, I labeled it like 15. I don't know if you saw the I did not, uh, the USB. Do you have that USB? I think I do. I do have it on my computer. Okay. So and we if printed labeled, what you gave us. I know some of them. If, it, if it's labeled like one for 15, 15, just. If it's 15. Uh, I think that that's the one then. Because our okay. target at 55 and 16, I assume, would have been your last one. Which that would have been four, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks that, so much. Yeah, no problem. I will I try to boost the audio, you guys. Okay. I'll try. I didn't know that the court was going to lodge it like that. Like, I'm used to them doing like a French one, kind of one. Like, more than yeah, they're gonna lodge it like all of them all at once. Yeah. yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, and then that one, uh, that was just a mistake. And don't even worry about it. I'm not gonna try and admit it. Awesome, thank you. Okay, just so you know, this is the highest volume that it will go. I'm looking for my plugin that is a volume boost, but I'm on edge. Uh, so hold on, let me see. Edge plugin volume booster. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, yeah, here's one. Add. Okay, good. By selecting this icon. Okay, great. Um, Show in toolbar, select. All right, now it's going to boost me, so you're going to also have to tell me uh, to turn when I'm too loud, okay? So here's the court volume. I'm sure I'm much louder now, so should I turn myself down? Can we speed this up? Thank you. May be seated. Oh, here we go. The judge finally is there. Oh, by the way, this hearing is about harassment. Um, Clayton Eckert has filed a petition for, I believe, a restraining order in this. They'll talk about <clears throat> what the actual thing is. I think it's a restraining order against uh, Owens because of her harassing uh, behavior. So good morning, I'm Commissioner Van Quetzis, and um, we're here today in the matter of Clayton Decker versus Laura Owens, CV 2023053952. We will start by having everyone uh, state their names. Ms. Ryan, if you want to begin. Good morning, Your Honor. Deandra Arena, counsel for the plaintiff, Clayton Eckerd. I'm also accompanied by Isabel Graney from my office, who's an associate. Thank you, Mr. Eckerd. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Joshua Lopez representing Laura Owens, who's present before the court on Microsoft Teams. Okay, thank you, Ms. Owens. If you can state your name for me. Laura Owens. All right, thank you. 
All right, so this is the continuation of the contested hearing that the uh, previously held on October 24th. Um, before we start, I guess we'll discuss that there was a request to have the hearing uh, not uh, put on live stream. Uh, the court granted that. Uh, then there was an objection to that file. The court had granted it prior to the objection. Uh, but I have, re I have reviewed the objection. At this time, I'm still ordering that the live stream not be active during the hearing. Okay, but again, the live stream didn't happen, but this is still a public hearing that anyone can ask the court for and be given it. And so that means it can be uploaded to the internet afterwards and no one is breaking any rules uh, by, by replaying this public hearing on the internet. Just, just being very clear. The courtroom is still open. Uh, anyone who wants to come to the courthouse can view the hearing uh, uh, in the courthouse, but I'm not uh, having my hearing live stream. Um, we also have. She means live streams. <laughs> There's no it, no injunction, no injunction to uh, to. Oh, I'm way louder again. Hold on. There's no injunction to stop anyone from re-uploading a public court hearing after the fact, which is what happened. A uh, notice of supplemental allegations. Uh, filed on October 31st. Um, Lopez, did you have an opportunity to review that? I, I did have an opportunity to review it, and I'd like to object on uh, a handful of different reasons, Your Honor. And if you'd like, I can present those now. Sure. Um, uh, so in regard to the amended amendment, well, in regard to the amendment, Your Honor, generally what happens in these order of protection hearings or injunction against harassment hearings, the petitioner is able to amend their petition at the beginning of the hearing before we've even started to determine what the scope of the hearing should be in regard to. Um, in this particular instance, Clayton did not have those in his petition, and we are now four-fifths of the way through his petition. Not only that, we've started the hearing and he's ended his case in chief. We've already presented now. We, he's ended his testimony. He's ended entering his exhibits. We've moved on to the defense case in chief, and we're four-fifths, again, we're four-fifths who will wait through the hearing. If this was all complete on the same day, he wouldn't get that opportunity to now amend his petition once we're already about to be at the end of the hearing. Just because he's now hired counsel doesn't give him enough, a new opportunity to now amend the petition or add exhibits or add testimony. That would essentially be restarting this whole hearing over again, opening up, opening up uh, him, uh, the petitioner, to be able to testify and then cross-examination, and then we would have to get a chance to respond. That that wouldn't make any sense. It's too late now. He shouldn't be able to amend the petition at this point. Yeah, Mr. Smith, if you wanted to be heard. I do, Your Honor, and you can remain seated. Okay. It's better for the microphone anyway. So whatever the court's preference is, of course. Um, Your Honor, with respect to our request to amend pursuant to Rule 38D, it's our position that we are able to amend at this point in time. Mr. Eckert has already provided testimony to support these new allegations in his case in chief. I believe the purpose of Rule 38 is in part for judicial economy. Uh, as the court's well aware, Mr. Eckert could proceed with filing an additional injunction against harassment at a later date. So we're really just doing this to ensure that the court has all the necessary allegations to proceed with making a determination in this hearing today. Um, I don't believe it's prejudicial whatsoever. Again, the testimony has already been provided to support these new allegations. And I think it's important that they be added so that the court can make a determination today and Mr. Eckert doesn't have to come back another time uh, with a new injunction. All right, thank you. Um, so when I first received it, I was concerned that we were you know, just adding stuff at the last second. I do think that these are just um, making more specific allegations that we did discuss that Mr. Lopez did have an opportunity to cross-examine him about because they were based on exhibits that were already admitted uh, and have already been admitted at this time. So I will allow the amended allegations at this time over the objection. Um, but I do have the same concerns Mr. Lopez expressed, which is we're not restarting this hearing. Um, and so the reason we restart it was so that 
Mr. Lopez could uh, ask Ms. Owens questions about their exhibits and admit whatever exhibits they were choosing to admit. Um, Mr. Eckford, I have given him an opportunity to give the opportunity to review those exhibits prior to those being uh, admitted um, since he hasn't had an opportunity to see those. So where we are in the case is that Ms. Owens has testified primarily um, she is going to, uh, I guess, finish her testimony through whatever exhibits uh, Mr. Lopez wants to admit. Um, and then Mr. Eckert uh, would have the opportunity to cross-examine Ms. Owens because that uh, part he hadn't concluded yet. Um, and then we would do closing arguments. So that's kind of where we are. Okay. Uh, just a question, Your Honor. <clears throat> so I, I understand that you're going to allow the amended petition, uh, but as far as the exhibits that the petitioner was trying to supplement, those are not being included, is that correct? He's not getting the opportunity to admit additional exhibits, is that correct? I mean, it, I guess the only thing I have about the exhibits, and I haven't seen that, I haven't reviewed all of those exhibits, the only thing I don't know about any of the exhibits is if they were in response to any of the exhibits that you have, I guess is what I, I'm not. And I, I guess I'm yeah. not sure either. Um, I guess that's the only thing I don't know, but um, at this point, I do think his, uh, you know, case has been basically concluded. Okay. Uh, my final question is, as far as this hearing, I know it indicates in the minute entry, it was, uh, we were just going to go for 30 minutes. Is that 30 minutes um, altogether? Is that 30 minutes for us to present our exhibits? Is that broken down? I, don't, I just want to make sure that I'm efficient with my time as best I can be. I mean, ideally, we're here for 30 minutes, but I will extend it to 45 minutes to allow everyone to do closing. So the testimony portion, uh, and that would include cross-examination time, would be the 30 minutes. Okay, uh, that's one chug of the giant monster can that she has next to her full of caffeine. I don't know if you know this. I've been pregnant three times. I have three children. Uh, and you're not supposed to have caffeine when you're pregnant. And in fact, it's one of the worst things about being pregnant. Uh, you have to cut out the caffeine. At the very minimum, you can have like a half-calf drink. Uh, she's chugging throughout this entire hearing and the one before, uh, before this, which was also is on Law Talk with Mike, by the way. You should watch that. It's hilarious. Um, she's also chugging a monster drink. Also, by the way, all three times I was pregnant, from the, like the second you get pregnant, you have to pee like every five minutes. And this does not get better. And the weird part is that it happens really early in the pregnancy. So like you're not even, you don't even have a belly yet and there's nothing pressing on anything. So you wonder, why do I have to pee so much? I can't answer that question. I don't know. But the, the constant peeing is unbelievable. In this video, Rogue Mama, she is claiming that she is 24 weeks pregnant with twins. Uh, I am telling you, she would have, if she were pregnant, and maybe she was, and she just has a, an iron bladder, I don't know. Uh, but if it were me, and I was pregnant, and drink, chugging a monster drink, um, I would be peeing every hmm, 15 minutes, I would say. 15 minutes. Um, as, as I said, the latest update is that her lawyer has submitted a document to the court that says, never mind. She's no longer pregnant. We don't need to be here anymore. Let's just dismiss the whole thing and go our separate ways. And Clayton's attorney is like, oh, no, 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 no. No, we need to know what happened to the babies. Or we need her to sign a statement that says she was never pregnant with Clayton Eckert's babies. Because in Arizona, where they are, 20 weeks is all you have before you need to show fetal death certificates. So uh, Ms. Owens has gotten herself into a pickle. And perhaps she has the evidence that can prove what happened to the babies, but we need to know because uh, this could end up in a, a police investigation to find out what happens, what happened to them. Um, and if they did not, if they never existed, she needs to fess up. And you know, you know what, Laura, that's the best option for you going forward. Uh, nobody wants to, you know, nobody wants anything but the truth here. So let's, Let's just, why don't you just come out with it? Okay. Uh, is it, do I 20 or is it like 15 and 15? I just want to make yeah, 20 sure. is fine. And then 15, you know, 10 minutes to cross-examine if we need to, and 15 minutes for closing or whatever. Around okay. that time. 
All right, thank you. Okay, attorney. Your Honor, with respect to the exhibits, the supplementals, they are, for the most part, impeachment exhibits with respect to Ms. Owens' prior testimony. So that's what they would be using for, and so I guess to answer the court's question, they are responsive to defendant's exhibits here. So it would be utilized for cross-examination. That's what the supplemental exhibits are for. And, I mean, I think you could use them for impeachment purposes if you felt they would be relevant. So I just don't know if she has them to look at. They were disclosed to Mr. Lopez on, I believe, yesterday morning. I was able to send them to my client, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. And, Your Honor, one last thing. While I understand and respect the court's decision regarding the courtroom being closed for live stream, I do have concerns regarding the fact that Ms. Owens is present virtually and who is present, you know, in her household and who else is being able to listen to this. My client, unfortunately, with this hearing not being able to be live streamed, is being precluded from having any of his family, friends, or any other persons that may want to listen in in support of him from being able to do that. So I would just ask that the court at least confirm with Ms. Owens that no one is present. I know this is hard to confirm, but that's one of our concerns. Okay. I'm not sure. All right. Brad has a good point. He wants me to give a 1 to 10 rating for each participant based on brushed hair or nicely groomed hair. I'm going to give the Judge Galkidis, I'm going to give her like a 9. That hair is well coiffed. The judge is looking put together. That is some silky looking good hair. So I'm giving her a 9. I'm going to give Clayton Eckert's lawyer, she has beautiful hair, but she could have run a brush through it one or two more times before walking into this courtroom. I'm seeing a lot of separation here. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it like a 7 because it's still very beautiful. So I'm going to get, it looks like well taken care of hair, but she could have used a brush through right before walking into court. As for Ms. Owen's hair, I mean, it's not bothering me. It's not bothering me. I mean, it, I think it's as good as it's going to get. I'm going to give her about a, like a six. It's like a six. It's not bothering me because it appears to be clean and conditioned. So, and it, it, it only has a few areas where it needs to be tamed down, like right here. Like it's a little out of control, but that's because she keeps grooming it. She's like grooming and grooming and grooming. I'm going to give her lawyer a 10. I mean, that's high and tight and you can't get better than that. Her lawyer's haircut looks good. Clayton's hair on the other, on the other hand, it could be a little shorter. It's, it's, I don't know. Is that a cowlick back here? Is that a, what is this? (laughs) What's going on back here? Cowlick maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, But that's, those are my ratings for the, (laughs) for the, uh, (laughs) Brad asked me about hair. Look, I know you're you're sorry now, aren't you? Don't ask me about hair because I will go off and it will we will just be way off track. I mean, obviously, his family can be here, and I'm not sure he looks like he has some people here. But um, Miss Owens, or is anyone else with you? No, I'm in a casita by myself. A casita, a casita. What's a casita? I literally don't know what that is. <laughs> What's a casita? Uh, what is a casita? Casitas are self-contained units that are generally built on a residential property in addition to or alongside a single family home. Like a guest house? Is that a guest house? I need my dad on a button saying, stop talking about your hair. I'm going to do that one of these days. <laughs> I can also pan if you want to, if they want to see that nobody else is present. I want to see. If that would be helpful. Let's okay. pan. All right. Thank you. All right, so Mr. Lopez, you may proceed. Uh, yes, Your Honor. She I didn't pan. Court's attention to, uh, and I'll jump around here a little bit, but Exhibit uh, 38. And Your Honor, do you have that available? It's a video. Uh, do you need a USB? You can hook up to that, to your computer, so it's to show it. I can make you a presenter. Uh, I can play it on my computer. Um, is that what you need? I, I can... I can bring it up there. Yeah, if you want to present it, um, then I can make you a presenter and you can, well, actually, because I think you need the little hookup thing to that. 
Yeah, there were some technical difficulties on it either say last time or in a different court. I could try and do that. I don't have the. I don't know, Beth, if you can bring in those hookup things. <laughs> we are now going to screw around with I'm tech problems. To to bring in the little extra so let's go fast because this is this just goes on. We need the, like some music. Let's put some music in here while they try to figure it out. Now we for plugging in cords. Oh, this is fun. They need Judge Carroll's tech guy in here. I mean, I'm going to do a presenter, but I don't see anything currently. I just see you right now. I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to. What is it with courtrooms and technology? They just can't get it right. How about now, Yana? Are you playing something? Or? Not yet, but I'm going to try to do the show. Sounds like Not seeing anything. Still not seeing anything. Yeah, they need IT uh, goatee bread. Um, I believe I know the one that you're referring to. I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it's the video of my pregnant stomach. Is that correct? Yeah. Is this an accurate video of you? Um, so it's actually not showing up at all on um, on mine. Um, Your Honor, I can see you and I can see... Um, Mr. Ackard's counsel, but I can't see my attorney or anything else. You can't see me. No, I think you can maybe just put it near the lot. We might be able to see it just on the screen. I mean, here. She's saying she can't see all the participants. She can see you. Well, can you see him now? I, I cannot. I can only see um, you and I can see Mr. Ackard's counsel. I mean, I can maybe unmake you a presenter because I think maybe that's what happened. Is... Can you see him now? Um, I cannot. Can you put something on your screen, like participants? Or is it just a different view? Oh my god. Oh. No, nothing else. Um, nobody else is showing up. Okay. Despite you being able to see me, yep. you have in front of you a video. Uh, the video of my pregnant stomach. Yes, what is it? Um, it's a video that I took of my pregnant son oh, because Mr. Eckerd asked me um, to take it for him so he could verify that I was indeed pregnant. Okay, and is this video an accurate reflection of what you looked like recently? Um, in September, I believe. And is this a video that Mr. Eckerd asked you to send to him? Yes, it is. Was that to show proof that you were in fact pregnant? Yes. Okay, then I'd like to move into evidence exhibit 38. Your objection, I don't believe sufficient foundation is laid. Also, this video does not have any time or date stamp on it to be inherently reliable. I mean, I can't see it, but. Is there any way, Your Honor, for the video to be played on the Microsoft Teams? So that's what I think we were trying to have them do with that. Uh, the hookup thing, but I, I don't know specifically how to do it. Beth, do you know how to hook it up or no? More tech problems. I do not, but I can ask next door. Oh my god. <laughs> Brad, is he going to move his whole computer into evidence? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know what he's doing with the wires now. But uh, it's a whole thing. There's dongles. Uh, that's what she said. Where's my that's what she said button? That's what she said. <laughs> You guys, I would fast forward, but uh, here's the problem. It's Vimeo. It's Vimeo. So I'm going really fast, or at least I was going fast. Oh, whoops. Here we go. Let's go two times speed. There we go. Uh, Vimeo doesn't have the same keystroke forward as YouTube does, so I don't want to mess with it. More tech problems. 
Thank you for the recommendation for the Uh Yeah, so look at it. When did you take this video? Um, I took this video in September, um, and when I did send it to Mr. Eckerd on that date via email, um, I also sent him a screenshot um that showed um like if you scroll up on a video and it, it can show exactly when it was taken where it was taken um to prove that it wasn't something like i had edited or or taken prior to that and why did you take that video i took that video because he had asked me for a video to show him that i was pregnant um okay because, and the, the, yeah i'm sorry the video that you submitted um and that we're requesting the court enter into evidence is this in this is the video that you're talking about? Yes, it is. I was able to pull up 38. Yes, that's the video. Okay. And Your I did Honor, it. December, we're requesting that this be entered into evidence. Again, I reiterate my objection, Your Honor. I don't believe sufficient foundation has been laid. She says September. I don't have the date in September of the year. Uh, there's no proof she sent this to Mr. Eckerd. And furthermore, we don't have proof that it hasn't been edited. Your Honor, she testified that this was the video, that she sent it in September. She sent it because Mr. Eckert had indicated she should send it to him uh, to show that she was pregnant. The foundation's laid. She testified to all of this. Ms. Allen, does the video that you're uh, looking at in Exhibit 38, is that a true and accurate depiction of the video that you made in September? Yes, it is. All right. I'll let the uh, exhibit over the objection. Uh, was it working? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Mr. Owens, I'd like to take your attention to Exhibit 40. Can you please explain what these are? These are text messages that Clayton sent me um, from the time when he found out that I was pregnant through, um, I believe it was the beginning of July. Um, and these were uh, text messages, for example, that that showed that, that um, I believe it was the second to last one, shows, I'm sorry, this made it harder. I wanted you to come over to confirm what I was doubting, and it did confirm that. So I don't see you as a liar anymore, proving that I had gone over to his house and taken a pregnancy test that he had purchased in front of him and that he knew I was Your pregnant. Honor, I'm going to object at this time. She's reading exhibits that have not been admitted into evidence. More foundation needs to be laid as far as I'm concerned. Your Honor, I think that she's just trying to explain what these are. Um, and she is well, on I, I mean, she can explain that without reading the whole exhibit. So. Okay. Uh, okay, without a... a are these text messages that Clinton had sent to you? Yes, they are. Is the phone number that is indicated at the top of each one of these text messages a uh, number that you know to be Clinton's? Yes, it is. Okay. Was that a phone number that Clinton had texted you pre from previously? Yes. Do you know if Clinton had changed his number since he um, had texted you from that number previously? No, he had not, to my knowledge. Okay. And uh, these text messages, uh, were they sent to you during the time period uh, between um, when you became pregnant to uh, when this petition uh, against you for this injunction against harassment was filed? Yes. Are these accurate um, reflections of those text messages? Have they been altered in any way? They have not been altered in any way. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to admit into evidence Exhibit 40. Any objection? Your Honor, I am objecting for the record. I think there's a completeness issue here. These text messages have been altered, as the court can see. These text messages only include the statements uh, that Ms. Owens wants to include here, not the context surrounding the text messages. I also believe that there hasn't been sufficient foundation laid with respect to the actual dates that these text messages span. All right, I'll admit 40 over objection. Isn't it something that you can just say, he can just ask her, have these been altered in any way? And she goes, no. And the judge is like, okay, we'll admit them. <laughs> like, In a normal court, you would need evidence if one side is saying 
these look altered. We haven't had a chance to have an expert look at them. Uh, you know, th that doesn't seem right. Well, we're going to, I'll admit it over the objection. Go ahead. <laughs> Just what? <laughs> what? All right. I'd like to turn your attention now to exhibit 47. Do you have exhibit 47 in front of you? Yes, I do. And what is this exhibit? This is uh, an email I got from Clayton on September 17th saying that he was unbothered by me going to the media about the situation. Okay. Now, uh, you said when was this? When was this email sent to you? September 17th. And it was your understanding that it was sent from Mr. Eckerd? Yes, correct. Okay. And what was this email in response to? Uh, this was in response to me saying that I, uh, I had told him that if he didn't uh, continue to participate in the paternity case that I felt like I was going to need to go to the press because I thought that would pressure him to come up with a parenting Objection, plan. Your Honor, she's providing a narrative that's not part of this exhibit. Um, again, this is a completeness issue here. She is cutting out the portions she wants and leaving out the context, which would be the email that she sent him that he's responding to. Um, I'm only if you want to present the other half of it, obviously you can. I would go ahead and uh, admit exhibit whatever we for you. Okay. Your Honor, yeah, at this time I'd like to admit this exhibit. 47, that be admitted. Okay, uh, I'd like to turn your attention to exhibit 37. Uh, this again is, or, uh, what is it? I do not have exhibit 37 in, in front of me. Uh, it should be a video. Um, um, can, can you possibly, uh, give me the context for which video it is, or? Uh, it, it should be a video that was posted by Clayton. Oh, okay. Yes, I know exactly the video. It was, um, a video that Clayton posted on October the 6th on his public. Okay, what, is, what is this? What is this video? Um, this is Mr. Eckerd, uh, telling his 200 and nearly 300,000, uh, uh, followers that um, the results of our paternity testing were back and he was not the father when in fact um, the paternity test results were were not back okay so this you had done a paternity test uh, correct the results are not back the results are still not back the testing is ongoing according to the lab but since the since those since the paternity test had come back the vocal fry is damn near killing me. They have not come back. The tests have not come back. She's done three tests, allegedly. Two of them have come back little to no fetal DNA. And the third got lost in transit, supposedly. That's what she claims. And the fourth, she has refused to take. But you don't get little to no fetal DNA for a DNA test if there's any baby at all. So to me, this little to no fetal DNA result is, is like, yeah, you weren't pregnant. <laughs> Where is Maury Povich when you need him? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, her due date was supposed to be February 14th, Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Back, you were indicating Clayton had posted a video? Correct. Where was that video posted? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, did you say where or when? Where? Um, it was posted to his public Instagram. When was it posted? October the 6th. Okay, how did you... I remind you that this woman went public with her story about Clayton Eckert getting her allegedly pregnant. She went to several media. She went to page six, medium, uh, I think the sun. I, I, I don't want to, don't quote me. There, there's like four or five media outlets that reported her story and just her side 
back when she was when she was telling him she was going to go to the media if he didn't date her literally she wanted him to sign a dating contract that i don't think comes up in here and or it might i'm not sure but i've read it and it's it's bad shit you guys uh ladies this is not the way to get a man by the way he will not love you if you try to tell him if you trick him or you tell him that you're pregnant and you force him to sign a, a dating contract or she agreed to in one of the texts i saw she told him that if he signed the contract the dating contract she would have an abortion that's I'm like i can't even wrap my head around that I, I can't so date me and i'll give you the abortion that you want wow yeah he's just not that into you i this is something that you can't force you can't force people to love you <laughs> wait you saw the dating con yes yes i've seen the dating contract it's on reddit you can go and read it on uh, our justice for clayton uh, there is a reddit page that has all the legal documents as many as they can find up and posted her motion to dismiss is hilarious the response to the motion to dismiss is even better um it's it's all a it's a shit show and it's coming down around her and again laura your best play here is to just fess up to whatever the truth is and then live a quiet life like don't continue to go after people who are reporting the facts of this case it will not help you it will only hurt you it will only get bigger now that i'm on this case and it's breaking through to my god tug is doing this on thursday um i'm talking to dave neal tomorrow uh, that umbrella guy is talking to dave on thursday you know and she's gone after dave she's suing dave neal for talking about this case ma'am this is you can't do that this is not going to go your way you think it's going to go your way but it isn't um you can't sue people especially members of the media for reporting public documents and public uh, public hearings things you've said in the media like you just need to take responsibility for these things and fess up to whatever it is uh i the super chats are backing up rogue mama thanks for being a member for a month this intro is way too short i agree with you we should make it longer uh ks coordinator member for two months thank you for being a member woohoo two brilliant months with megan medium smart people assemble <laughs> that's correct Duncan, Idaho. Megan, Laura told me to tell you to leave her alone or else. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, she just doesn't know, though, what she's getting into with me. Again, Laura, I just want to tell you, if you if you decide to send me anything, and you're welcome to do so, you're welcome to send me any emails, uh, you're welcome to send me all the, all the explanations and threats or whatever it is you want to send, there's my email address. But there is a but, and it's a big but. If you, if it's like a Kim Kardashian size butt. If you send me anything, I will publish it. You will not be able to then say she published private emails from me. Nothing you send me in an email is private, Miss Owens. Nothing. If you send me something, including your evidence or anything else you want to send, it will be made public. So please think about that before you do it. Uh, I will read it word for bloody word to the internet. Uh, and that's the way it works. Email, you cannot send someone an email and then say, this is for your eyes only. Unless you're my employer, then you can order me to not disclose the contents of an email. But if you send a reporter an email, everything you say in it is subject to public scrutiny. So please be aware of that first before you decide to send me emails and i welcome your emails uh it's fine as long as you know that going in i don't want to hear complaining afterwards that she published my emails unhung hero laura like becky is a ho name i'm not sure about that i'm not the expert on ho names but flux is and she's in the chat so you might want to talk to her about it <laughs> la says i went to high school with dave neal we were in marching symphonic jazz bands he was the president and cross-country team. Our band went to Disney that year. He was a senior when I was a freshman. 
So he probably doesn't remember me. He was popular in a good way. People I knew liked him, not the stereotypical popular small world. Yeah, I saw your comments on legal vices today, and I thought that was really funny. What a small world. Um, totally. Uh, Darcy says, behind her lawyer is Greg Gillespie. He is the first guy she did this with, and this was his lawyer in that case. That is correct. Uh, I have the Maricopa County website. Do I still have it up? I do not. But if you go to the Maricopa County website, you can pull up the entire case against uh, Gillespie. She dragged him through court for four years, uh, all surrounding this alleged pregnancy with twins again. Uh, this woman is either the most fertile, uh, this science should study her. She can not only get pregnant uh, through oral sex, but she can she apparently can only get pregnant with twins. That is a thing that happens in this case, I guess. That's what she says. And she says that she's pregnant with twins all the time. Uh, same case in Greg Gillespie's case. Duncan Idaho, thanks to the super chat, says, guys, this type of woman is a mortal danger to you. Remember the consequences of being a hoe. And ladies, too, vet your partners. Don't everyone just give it to the first thing with two legs and a beating heart. This is such important information. I feel like we sh I should pin it to the stream. Uh, this is important and true. And in my book, Believe Evidence, The Death of Due Process from Salome to Hashtag Me Too, this book actually has an entire chapter dedicated to that very point of view. We must be much more careful about the people that we choose to be intimate with because of the severe and sometimes deadly consequences uh, for some people. And this book uh, is it gives you examples throughout literature and history of the different times that uh, many women have lied and fabricated evidence to harm the, their targets. Um, and it usually does start out with some kind of romantic entanglement, an entanglement as the uh, as what's her name likes to say, Will Smith's wife. Uh, she, she's a fan of the entanglements. Wait, that's a weird position for my face. Hold on. What am I doing over there? Okay, here we go. You get a copy of it. Um, I got a copy because it was um, on his public Instagram. Okay, and was uh, was this an accurate report? Have you altered the video in any way? No, I have not. Okay, Your Honor, I'd like to admit Exhibit 37 into evidence. See, I would have objected to that too. Objection. How do we know you didn't alter it? You know, are we going <laughs> to... Upon the horizon says, okay, so so now Megan's a biologist knowing how women can and can't get pregnant. Well, you know, you know, it's 2024. Maybe I've missed something. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We don't even know what a woman is anymore. So do we know how women get pregnant? Maybe we don't. <laughs> Maybe we don't. <laughs> I'm objecting on relevance. This case is about Miss Owen's harassment of Mr. Eckert. Mr. Eckert posting anything on his private social media is not relevant to this case. Your Honor, as part of the petition that Mr. Eckert had written, she he had indicated that my client was defaming him when in fact my client was not defaming him and that she was harassing him by sending him emails and different text messages. I think that this is relevant to show that um, not only were the text messages and emails concerning her, uh, my client's pregnancy paternity, but also what I had indicated in my opening and evidence that we had Ms. Owens testify to, that she did in fact also message Clinton to take down certain false videos or uh, false statements offline because she was getting harassed by his fans and followers. So this video is to show that this was the video that he had posted and the reason um, she had kin uh, continued communication with him beyond just the pregnancy and paternity was for him to take down certain videos, that it wasn't for harassment and that it was for legitimate purposes. This is that video that we want to present to show why my client was communicating with Clinton regarding that specific issue. All right, I'll admit the exhibit for the purpose of that limited purpose that you're referring to. I'll permission to publish to the court. Okay. Who's got the news tonight? I 
signed up to be a dude. Looks like good news, right? Well, test results came back early, and they said little to no fetal DNA present. Let's go, baby. We knew, I knew, and I'm happy. Five months of finally put to rest. Thank you all to those that supported me and waited until everything came out. Um, and again, false accusations in two years. I, I really don't want to, you know, look ahead to next year and see what's going to happen. I think false accusations in a lifetime are done. So thank you all for the support, love, trying time that I learned so much about myself. And now back to the regularly scheduled programming. So these of you listen. It's Friday. About five more minutes. I can actually find that post, uh, and so you can actually hear it more clearly because it's on his Instagram. So let me let me look for it. Unless I'd he's like taken it down. And, uh, Mr. Owens, I'd like to turn your attention to Exhibit 44. What is Exhibit 44? Exhibit 44 is a text message I received from Clayton on June the 4th. Okay, wait, hold on. I found it. Let's go over and look at the video because that was really muffled and it was hard to hear. So let's look at his uh, Instagram. This was the video they just played in the court. You know what we need on a Friday? We need some good news. And who's got the good news today? I got the good news. What's that good news, Clayton? Well, test results came back early and they said little to no fetal DNA present. Let's go, baby. We knew, I knew that that was going to happen. Thankfully, five months of torture can finally be put to rest. I want to say thank you all to those that have supported me and waited until everything came out. Um, and man, two false accusations in two years. I, I really don't want to, you know, look ahead to next year and see what's going to happen. I think two false accusations in a lifetime is enough. So thank you. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what the other false accusation was. Thank you all for the support, the love. This was a trying time, but I learned so much about myself. And now back to the regularly scheduled programming, baby. Look, I would suggest Clayton that you get your hips, your hip wiggle under control, or this will, you'll, it will happen to you more than once, more than twice, more than three times, because you're now an easy mark. People know women, these women who want to come after you, they know you're easy. Stop being so easy. Don't be a hoe. Uh, local says new book for Megan. Don't date a hoe. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I mean, on one hand, uh, I'm glad for him that he got his the good news that he got. Uh, but stop. Yes, thank you. Stop dipping your wick in crazy. Take some responsibility for what happened here and be self-aware a little. Like perhaps you could say, you could tell people like, you know, I learned an important lesson here that I need to share with you. Like, be careful. Get to know someone first before you have a, a encounter with someone you don't even know. You know, that's that's a bad idea. I mean, everybody saw Fatal Attraction, right? I mean, I think it's been too many years since Fatal Attraction was a big hit. And I think everybody needs to, everyone in this younger generation needs to watch Fatal Attraction and see what happens sometimes uh, when you are enticed by a woman who wants to give you something for nothing. Sometimes there's a whole reason for it that, you, that is going to destroy your life. So be careful. Okay. And um, was this Okay, this was from is this a text message or is this an email? This is a text message. Is this an accurate reflection of the text message? Has it been altered in any way um, that Clayton had sent to you? No, it has not been altered, and yes, it is accurate. 
It, but I don't see a phone number in here with Mr. Eckerd's phone number saved as Clayton Eckerd in your phone. Yes, it was at that point. Okay. And, um, Your Honor, I'd like to admit Exhibit 44 into evidence at this time. Any objection to 44? Your Honor, I would just object for the record as to completeness. Again, I believe there is more to this text message than what is being disclosed in this exhibit. All right, I'll admit it over objection. Okay, um, I'd like to turn to Exhibit 46. Ms. Owens, what is Exhibit 46? Um, exhibit 46 is uh, a variety of different medical providers that I saw uh, confirming that I am in fact pregnant from the day I found out I was pregnant on June 1st through, um, I believe it was last week. It may have been uh, through the week prior to that, but I have the dates on there uh, through October okay. 11th. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, were, were, were these pictures, why were these pictures taken? Why did you save these documents? Um, I saved these documents again to try to prove to Mr. Eckerd that I was indeed pregnant because he uh, doubted me. <laughs> Hard to believe. Documents? Yes, he did. To show that, to show why? Um, he asked for these documents to show that I was indeed um, pregnant and that the pregnancy was ongoing and that it was viable. Have you altered any of these documents in a way, in any way to misconstrue their meaning? No, I have not altered them. And are these an accurate reflection of these documents? Yes, it's entirely accurate. They are your documents? Yes, they are. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to admit Exhibit 46 into evidence. Your Honor, I'm not objecting because I believe the court needs to see these exhibits, um, but I will note that he had concerns regarding what they're being offered for. So I'll admit 46. I like the look on his attorney's face. She's very serious. She's very angry for her client, and you can see it. Uh, before this, the first hearing that he had with her, he had no representation. Uh, uh, Dave Neal's like audience raised him attorney's fees so that he could that in front of you? hire someone. I do, yes. He did a pretty okay, good job, it? pro se. Um, this is a letter from the Arizona Department of real estate that they sent me after uh, looking into Mr. Eckerd's conduct when he <gasps> she went to the Department of Real Estate. She tried to go after his career. Oh my God. Are you kidding? He was my uh, realtor um, showing that he was found in violation of professional conduct for not submitting an offer. Okay. Was this something that you received from the Arizona Department of Real Estate? Correct. Did you alter this document in any way? No, I did not. Did you receive it on or about September 15th, 2023? Correct. Okay, Your Honor, I'd like to admit this into evidence. I'm objecting for the record based on relevance. Again, this matter is about Ms. Owen's harassment of Mr. Eckert. We do not believe that this is relevant. I agree. It will not be admitted. 48. Your Honor, how much time? One minute. Her attorney after this one, she goes through a lot of attorneys. I'd like to turn to exhibit 50, Your Honor. The one she hired after him was a woman and she just quit. Uh, so she is now not represented anymore. She filed the motion saying that she's no longer pregnant and then she quit. Uh, so something happened there. Something happened where the attorney just didn't want anything more to do with it apparently. This will be the final one today. Or exhibit 50, do you, see, do you recognize that exhibit? Yes, I do. Okay, and what is it of? Um, this is something that was posted to Reddit um, by Mr. Eckerd under a uh, false name and that was also in the 
order of protection hearing I had against him last last week. It was discussed. Okay, and did you change this image in any way? No, I definitely did not. How did you, how'd you get a copy of this image? Um, it was it was on Reddit. Somebody had uh, created it, um, but I I know it was Mr. Eckert because only he had he had this image. Okay. Objection. I'm She's, she's testifying, Your Honor, regarding information that she cannot testify about. Speculating. Oh. Oh. Okay. You can have her lay foundation that she has knowledge of. Okay. It's your understanding that Mr. Eckerd posted this this picture? Um. Yes, because only he had he only he had the photo and the sonogram. I'm I'm holding that's been edited. Yeah, Darcy, this is correct. She has called Florida law enforcement over a YouTuber's video about her. This is the YouTuber I mentioned at the beginning of the this uh, stream with a small channel that she is targeting and trying to, and she's making up outrageous accusations against this person. That's what she does, though. She She makes up outrageous accusations and then you know, when you go to law enforcement and you give them a list of egregious things you say someone did to you, they have to take it on face value and go investigate it. So this person on YouTube that she's going after is going to go through a lot of hell and she has a, a smaller channel. I'm sorry, I don't know her name right now, or I would send you over there to give her some uh, some words of encouragement. Let's see if I can find her. She's on the Justice for Clayton Reddit page. She posts there. She posted recently a video about the harassment that she's been going through because of this woman. And a lot of people are like, oh, you shouldn't say her name. Don't talk about this. She's going to come after you. She's get, you know, make my day. I will monetize it. I'm not, look, I'm not, I'm not new at this. I have dealt with people like this for a long time. In fact, Let's see, the last person who tried to vexatiously sue me ended up with a 600-page book about her. Now, Laura, if you want to go down that road, I can promise you, you won't like what comes out of it, just like she didn't. She didn't like what came out of it. It was an entire book, 666 pages about the vexatious litigation that was launched against me. I also ended up with a $55,000 judgment. I am not new to the legal game. All my friends are lawyers. My sister is a lawyer. You are not going to win this with me. You will not vexatiously sue me. So I suggest you don't try. But it bothers me. It bothers me. Yeah, can you believe that it turned out to be 666 pages? That was not, that was not on purpose, but it was funny. It was funny. Um, I, I did... <laughs> Well, I think that was maybe the first version. Let's see what this version is. I think that might have been like the first one. This one is 600 and 51. 651. Okay. It was 666. I think maybe one the first one, mm -hmm. uh, but it's now 651. But yeah, I, all of my friends are lawyers, like everyone I know. Um, and if, if, here's why I say Laura, Come clean, say your apologies, and move on. W whatever you need to do, do it. Because this is, this is only going to get bigger now. And if you come after me, my friends in the legal community are going to cover that case. So you're going to have like four or five channels covering that case. Um, on top of it, I'll raise the money to hire some shark like Robert Barnes, um, you're not going to like what happens. So I, I don't encourage you to do this. I actually think you should not do this. It would be not in your best interest to get into it with, with a person with my specific set of skills. Because I do have a specific set of skills. <laughs> Ask Wawatosa. <laughs> Ask the Wawatosa school board. Uh, they just had to write a, a big check to Robert Barnes. Okay. I mean, that's I'd like to admit exhibit 50. 50 at this time. Your Honor, I'm objecting. This is <clears throat> inherently unreliable. She's failed to lay sufficient foundation. We this this was not posted by Mr. Eckert, and she's provided zero proof that this was posted by Mr. Eckert or further that this was sent to Mr. Eckert. Um, 
in this manner. I'm going to sustain the objection and not admit the fee. Okay, no further, uh, nothing further at this time, though. Cross examination. Your Honor, before I start with cross examination, um, my request would be if the court's willing to entertain this, that we pre be permitted to go until noon. Um, and I would be willing to waive closing argument because I do have important questions that I would like to go through as opposed to presenting the court with a closing argument if the court would allow that. Well, let's see how we're doing on time. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Owens. Good morning. You were, thoroughly, you were thoroughly questioned by your attorney at the last hearing in this case on October 24th of 2023, correct? Correct. And you understand that you were under oath at that time and you remain under oath today, right? Correct. And you're aware that any false testimony that you provided or provide today could be considered perjury, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so I, love, that, I love that question. Do you realize, do you see why I, I think she has Camille Vasquez vibes? She's <laughs> like, you understand that you are under oath, correct? And and you you understand that you can be charged with perjury. Is there anything in your statement you want to change right now? You know, that would have been the moment if there was anything that was wrong in her statements for her to change it and come clean. But we're doubling down. Before I proceed with my line of questioning, do you have any prior testimony that you'd like to correct at this time? I do not. Oh boy. I want to make sure that you're clear headed. And obviously, uh, it's your position that you are pregnant with alleged twins, correct? A hundred percent. Yes, correct. hundred percent. What medications are you currently on? Objection, Your Honor. Relevant. And that's an, that's an inappropriate question today. What overall can be impacting your testimony? Um, I'm on. Do not sit down. Natals, and I'm on folic acid. Which you can and get I over also, the counter. I'm sorry, I also take Lamotrigine for epilepsy. Is there anything else? Is that your entire list of medications? That's my entire list because I was taken off of anything else that I was on when I found out that I was pregnant. And have you been diagnosed with any other medical or mental health issues? Objection, uh, Your Honor. I don't think that that's going into her mental health, going into her physical health, mental health. I don't think that's appropriate. Uh, for this type of hearing. That doesn't really have a question. Uh, depression. Okay, and any other physical health diagnoses? Epilepsy. And who who provided those diagnoses? All right, I think we're now over the report of that testimony. Understood, Your Honor. I'll move, move on. on, please. Monster swig. She's also, she probably should have mentioned she's on monster drinks too. How long are you as we sit here today with respect to the pregnancy? I am 24 weeks along. And when was your last menstrual period in order to calculate your due date? Uh, objection, Your Honor. I, I don't think that that's appropriate at this time. It How could this not be appropriate? <laughs> And the judge agrees with him and it's like, wait a minute, she's claiming that she's pregnant. These are just, these are just normal questions, you know, to, to, you would know. Oh my God. It seems like these questions are meant to harass my client. She's indicated she's pregnant. She's indicated it's been about a month. You don't need to know things about her menstrual period. I'm going to have to the objection. I'm sorry. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you please uh, provide us with the, your alleged due date? Uh, February 14th. <laughs> Valentine's Can you testify that there's absolutely no possibility at all that your alleged twins are anyone other than Clayton's, correct? There's no chance they're anybody else's. But you understand that Clayton has been very clear from day one that he did not have sexual intercourse with you, right? Um. Clayton was not, if you look at the June 4th message, he- Sam, these are yes or no questions. Do you understand that Clayton was very clear from day one 
that it's his position he did not have sexual intercourse with you? Then the answer is no. And as we sit here today, you have participated in three DNA tests to try to prove that Clayton is the father, correct? Correct. And not a single DNA test has come back. Oh, I'm sorry. Clayton Clayton the father. Two. Sorry. It was, it was two DNA tests, not three. Well, you indicated at the last hearing that you were providing a sample for the third DNA test to be completed, correct? But the second one got, got, there was an issue with the transit according to the lab. So, I mean, that wasn't tested. So I can't say that I have had three tests that have come back with different results because only two were tested. Ms. Owens, you've provided a sample on three separate occasions for DNA tests, correct? Correct. But the second was, was, so there was there yes or no I questions? I'm not, I'm not looking for you to elaborate. So we'll move on. As we sit here today, not a single DNA test has come back indicating that claims the father, correct? The samples were diluted and I'm going back next month is what so I would say. Yes or no questions. It's a very simple question. As we sit here today, you have no DNA test that indicates that Clayton is the father, right? The result, the testing is ongoing is what I was told, as was Clayton's. So, so that's you've not said that on a couple occasions that the testing is ongoing. Correct. So is it your testimony that you provide these samples and that there's no results that are coming from these samples you're providing? I'm, I'm unclear on what you're trying to ask me because they said that okay, I need well, months to give another sample that the testing is. My question is, why do we need so many of these tests? <laughs> why wasn't the first result enough that said little to no fetal DNA? And now two of them have come back little to no fetal DNA. Then we have the third or the second. I don't know what, how she's counting it uh, that got lost in transit. But how many of these tests do we need? is not back so I'm, I'm unclear I guess I'm trying to say isn't it true that the test came back and indicated there was zero fetal DNA that's absolutely not true okay and again Ms. Owens you have provided no testimony and no um, objective evidence or documentation to date to support that you have a positive DNA test proving Clayton's the father of your alleged twin, right? The testing is ongoing. I'm, I'm unclear, I guess, is what you're trying to ask me. Who is your OBGYN? Dr. McCool yeah, and Dr. H Dr. Higley. Sure, I wasn't able to, to hear that, and I'm not sure if that's uh, I'll withdraw the objection, then. Can you please repeat that, Ms. Owens? Who, who is your OBGYN? My main OBGYN is the perinatologist, Dr. McCool. And what is the last time, oh, well, you said the main OBGYN. Who else are you seeing? What other pregnancy-related doctors are you seeing? Dr. Higley, who I saw last Friday, and, and an epilepsy doctor as well, Court. He specializes in pregnancy. Okay. And in your, in your exhibit, I believe it was 44, you indicated, actually, let me go back here. I apologize. It was your exhibit 43. You indicated that all of exhibit 43 uh, contains copies of your medical rack records that would support this alleged pregnancy, correct? Um, I believe it was exhibit 46 that was the proof of pregnancy. We, di we didn't do exhibit 43. I apologize. Exhibit 46. My mistake. Wow. And the wind, the wind outside is outrageous. It's loud. I am it, the, all the kids school activities got canceled, uh, after because of the high winds and I just heard it and it was like, Whoa, scary. Exhibit 46, all that you have from Dr. McCool here is a screenshot of an upcoming...
her facial expressions are cracking me up. So all she provided from Dr. McCool is a screenshot of appointment for Monday, an appointment. July 24th of 2023, right? Correct. That so you, you, you understand that anyone can go online at a mommy where Dr. McCool works and make an appointment for it for an OBGYN appointment with Dr. McCool, correct? Um, that that is that is not true. Dr. McCool special is a parent referral to have to see him because I have epilepsy. He's a high risk specialist. You can't go and make an appointment with him. I had to send records to get an appointment with him. Okay, but I the only record that you provided this court with regarding your alleged high risk perinatologist is a screenshot of an appointment for Monday, July twenty fourth of twenty twenty three, right? No, I provided the last page was October the 11th of the diagnosis of epilepsy during pregnancy from my neurologist after an appointment that day. Ms. Owens, there is no copy of any medical record from October 11th. Yes, there is the last is page. Is October, gonna... It's okay. October 11th. If you look at the last page. Zeman Glennis on October 11th, 10, 53, 20, Mountain Standard Time. Yeah, no, I, I apologize. What was it that the court indicated? A few more minutes, so we need to probably step it up a little bit okay. if you want to get to other things. Um, as we sit here today, Ms. Owens, you have refused to sign any sort of HIPAA release so that Mr. Eckerd could obtain directly from your medical providers evidence to support any alleged pregnancy. No, I, on Friday, I literally had the doctor send it to him directly. I had my provider send it to him directly. If this stream goes down, it's because my power went out, you guys. I'm hearing some major wind outside, so I'm not, I don't think it's looking good for long term, uh, but we're going to try. I think I'm going to speed it up a little bit. That's an email I sent to him telling him that it was sent directly to him. I signed a HIPAA release. Ms. Owens, this is not the first time that you've made allegations that you're pregnant with twins within the last two years, correct? That is incorrect. Okay. No, it's correct. So I would ask the court to take judicial notice, Your Honor, of a civil matter involving Mr. Greg Kolesky, who is present in the courtroom today. Um, and it's CV. We got that number for the court. So behind Laura's. Uh, attorney you can see greg over here in the corner with his wife who is currently expecting and she actually is pregnant and i i just feel bad for these people who are under the stress dave neal's wife is pregnant too and it's just like the stress these people are under is just too much i have a protective 2021 gillespie and against mr eckard and i wish i was aware that mr gillespie zero five two eight nine three no i'm gonna object to that uh, we, we had an she has a restraining order against Mr. Gillespie. Gee, that's a shocker. Specific that we discussed last time regarding that case and what was presented was a complaint and a motion to dismiss. And there wasn't any findings from any court on anything related to that. So I'm not going to consider that at this point. Your Honor, I, do I can't believe she wouldn't consider this. You're looking at a case where the opposing attorney is telling you, this has been done before. This person has done this to other people. Let me show you the evidence. And the judge is like, nah, I don't want to know. <laughs> what? You have some questions that I think are very important for the court to hear regarding that case. I understand that the court doesn't want to take judicial notice, but I do have questions that are important that I would like to proceed with regarding the, the uncanny similarity. Oops. I don't think that that would be appropriate for this specific hearing. We know the scope of this particular hearing. Bringing up things in a separate case, there could be there's separate issues. Uh, they're not; these are not the same thing. This is an injunction against harassment. I don't even know what that that case is. That's not; it's not an injunction against harassment. I know that. It's, he doesn't. Her lawyer doesn't know what the Greg Gillespie case is. He didn't do any due diligence on this client before he took her on. He didn't look at the public records on the Maricopa County website to look into it. Are you kidding me? Because I don't think I believe that. Are any lawyers of mine in the uh, chat? Nick, are you there? Uh, Nick Campbell. Uh, do, is that something that seems... Um, 
credible to you that an attorney before taking on a case like this wouldn't search the docket to see if she's a vexatious litigator, if, if she's done anything like this before. He has no knowledge of, of a four-year case against Greg Gillespie that is clearly right there on the Maricopa County docket. I can see it right there. Does anyone believe that this is credible? Not appropriate. Your Honor, this goes to the heart of why Mr. Eckerd needs this injunction against harassment and Ms. Ms. Owens' pattern, her modus operandi, her pattern of behavior, her pattern of making the same claims against other men in the state of Arizona within the last two years. And I think it's highly relevant to this case because it supports why Mr. Eckerd needs this injunction against harassment because this individual has done this before and there are concerns that she will not stop. They, I, I, I'm going to sustain the objection. I'm not going to allow that this time. More monster. I would ask again the court to reconsider here because this matter it's very important that the court hears how Miss Owens has made the exact same allegation in another matter within the last two years, and that she has committed perjury in her last in the last hearing because she made incorrect state she made false statements under oath. That was a great screenshot that I just missed regarding the nature of that case. She opens the door in her testimony when Mr. Lopez was cross examined when he was direct examining her regarding the fact that there are no other cases that are similar regarding things that happened in that case. So she did open the door based on her direct examination. Honor, these are very serious allegations that the petitioner's attorney is now alleging against my client. She is insisting that my client has now committed perjury. My client has never been, has no criminal history and is not being charged with perjury. So. And isn't that a shame? That, that there's evidence on the record she's done this to multiple people with the exact same allegations and there's been no criminal history. Isn't that a shame? My God, what are we doing in this country? Why do women get away with this? That's what my book is all about. Pick up a copy, believe evidence, the death of due process from Salome to hashtag me too. It's on Amazon. And by the way, in some of the cases that I wrote about, the I don't think I covered one where the woman involved who made false allegations actually faced any consequence, no criminal consequences, no, not even sanctions, nothing, not even public ridicule. That this is, it's a, it's something, it's a real problem. Uh, Warrior Biatch wants to know, Megan, are you going to start giving away books again? I'm glad you asked because tomorrow when Dave Neal is on the program, I am going to raffle off several copies of Believe Evidence, The Death of Due Process from Salome to Hashtag Me Too, signed copies, by the way, I'm going to raffle those off to uh, anybody who sends super chats, rumble rants, uh, cash apps or Venmos, and all of that is going to, the proceeds for which is going to go into my uh, Laura Owens litigation account uh, because I'm expecting to be, you know, to be assaulted by her in some way uh, because this is just who she is. And so that will, I'll put that away for a rainy day. But yes, I'm going to raffle off several of them, three, maybe four. Um, so tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. because Dave Neal will be here. I don't, I, I don't know. Like, that's just an allegation. Again, these cases are completely different. We're hearing that the attorney testified that these are the same. These are not the same matters. Uh, this, these questions and this cross-examination of my client regarding these issues, again, would be inappropriate and is outside the scope of this hearing. In fact, it even sounds like she's trying to bring out character evidence, which would be inadmissible in a hearing like this. I'm going to sustain the objection again. So if there's other things you want to ask about her testimony, okay. you have about two more minutes. Ms. Owens, you understand and you testified under oath that Mr. Eckert blocked you from communicating with him, correct? He would block and unblock, but but not from communication. From it was on a text number, but we were always in email communication. As recently as the day before we went to the I went to the press, he sent me an email. So, well, Mr. Eckert told you he didn't want you contacting him anymore, and then would block your telephone number, correct? But told me to email him. Ms. Owens, these are yes or no questions. Isn't it true that Mr. Eckerd indicated he did not want you contacting him anymore and then would block your telephone number? Actually, that's incorrect from the last, in, from the early uh, resolution conference that we had, Mr. Eckerd told me specifically to contact him via text. I've forgotten that. If you look at the, 
whatever the transcript from that hearing, he would see that. And I didn't, I haven't contacted him via text after he told me to. Okay, but can you take a look at Exhibit 55 for me, please? Um, I don't have an Exhibit 55. Your Honor, these are our supplemental exhibits. That were in the ones that, that are their exhibits that they would have sent you. Um, I, it may not be marked by, by number, is, I guess the issue hers may not be marked by number. They are, Your Honor. Uh, let's check by my number. email. I did not see his exhibits. Excuse me. Let me, uh, and Your Honor, I'm asking for. Uh, you guys are asking if locals has made any memes yet. No, they're falling down on the job. I, I don't know what's going on with the meme farmers over on locals, but we have absolutely no memes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they're talking about their hair in there, which I can't really blame them because I do that a lot too. Meganfox.locals.com if you want to join uh, over there. It's a lot of fun. One more time because her not being prepared knowing I presented these exhibits to her attorney yesterday. It's coming into my time and I have still several questions I think to ask. I was not aware that that he was getting more exhibits added after he already had testified, so I apologize. Uh, I okay. I sent well, text messages between the parties dated five twenty three twenty five twenty five twenty three. That's all I have. I don't have the actual that's exhibit. The, that's the first one, and then there is another one after that. Do you see? Do you have the exhibit that's from May twenty fifth. Um, I don't see anything. I literally just am seeing a list of plaintiff's trial exhibits 55 through 63. Uh, can you scroll explain down. what the context is for me to Mom? understand? Are you on camera? Yes, honey. Are you able to scroll down? Your Honor, I'm concerned if she doesn't have these exhibits that we're going to need more time because this is very important that I get through this testimony. And I provided these to counsel in advance to avoid this exact issue. And had Ms. Owens been present, this wouldn't have been an issue at all. Right, but I have a protective order against Mr. Eckert. <laughs> all right. Just, can you find the exhibits or not? Uh, By the way, it's incredibly easy to get a protective order against anyone uh, because judges err on the side of caution. So anyone can go to a judge and say, I need a protective order against Bob because Bob threatened me. <laughs> Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It, most of the time, the judge will be like, okay, <laughs> you can have it. And then you have to go to a hearing while you have this protective order you know, in place. They put the emergency in. Then you go to a hearing and you, you plead your case and the it either stays or it's thrown out. It's incredibly easy to get a protective order. Although it wasn't easy for me. I couldn't get one against this crazy woman who was stalking me. Uh, the judge called us both in front of her and she yelled at her, but she wouldn't give me the, the order, even though I had it on video. So I feel like judges are more likely to give protective orders to women against men than they are to give them to men against women and also women against women. Like it's, it seems like she just, you know, like it's much easier to just hand them out like candy when it's a woman accusing a man, but not the other way around. Let me just try to see if I can scroll down. Hang on, maybe if I make my screen smaller. I see, oh, yes, I do. Hang on, I think I see them. I see exhibit 50, 55. Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Ms. Owens, do you see exhibit 55? It is a text message communication between you and Clayton dated May 25th of 2023, correct? Correct, the day after he didn't file the... Uh, my I would move to admit these exhibits, yeah. Your Honor. This exhibit. Oh, it's not attached time. She's asked if you recognize the exhibit. Any objection to 55? Um, I no, don't remember sending it. Oh. None your business. I need a protective order for Megan Fox. Her podcast prevents me from getting anything done. <laughs> Good one. And here, Ms. Owens, on May 25th of 2023, Clayton says to you, I'm debating filing a police report. Please leave me alone, correct? The, the context needs to be stated. He did not make Ms. a Owens, one I am asking you yes or no question. <laughs> and then he was found in violation. Your attorney will have the time to ask you a question again, Ms. Owens. So just answer her question, and your attorney will ask an opportunity to question you again. Okay, then can you, I'm sorry, can you uh, repeat the question? I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> just forget I'm concerned that this is, that she's doing this intentionally to eat it. All right, let's time. just ask the question. She's wasting more time saying all that stuff. Ms. Owens, isn't it true that on this text message dated May 25th of 2023, I responded to you and said, I'm debating filing a police report. Please leave me alone, correct? That's what the text message says. I don't have that. 
but sure and right below it. that you sent him another text message correct that's what it shows correct okay so we need to exhibit 56 it should be the next page of the document please so under how are we on time because i need to three minutes understand. we're close on time so i want to leave everyone time to do a closing page you You see these emails between you and Clayton dated May uh, June 28th of 2020. What is going on with this? With this? What What is she looking for? <laughs> I'm so confused. Her head is like down here in the frame. What's going on? Correct. Correct. But the middle email is missing from him. But correct. Yes. You're new for the admission of Exhibit 56, oh. please. <laughs> now the ca is she laying down or just the camera moved? But it's missing it's the 56. middle email. Yeah, no, I'm going to object because this is. This, um, I'm getting this dizzy. Everything in, in whole. This is, you can see that there's an email missing between these two emails. I don't, there wasn't any foundation that was laid. I, I, but this is, this is, this was one of many emails sent between the two of us. Clayton changed his mind many times. <laughs> so I, I guess just referring to these exhibits, do you recognize these exhibits? Um, do you accept these messages? Um, I mean, that's that's what they said. I haven't gotten to read through them, but I mean, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. Do you believe these are a representation of the exhibits or of the emails that were sent? Um, I know that my name when somebody emails when I email somebody else has a picture of me with a horse instead of the LO. So I don't know if that's relevant, whereas like Clayton's picture is, is shown with slight effort. So I don't know if that's relevant. I'm uh, if I read these quickly, I can see if, um, if they are mine. I'm I'm going to trust that they are mine, but um, uh, I haven't got, gotten a chance to read through them. Um, Your Honor, she, she did testify that she recognized the, the email dated June 28th of 2023, so I'm asking for their admission. Um, again, the middle email is missing where Clayton tried to trap me, but um, uh, yeah, no, I'm asking if the court strikes that. that. There's no question before her right now regarding that. I'll, I'll strike that statement. I will go ahead and admit uh, Exhibit 56. In Exhibit 56, Ms. Owens, on line one, you say, I just need clarity as to what we are doing. I've offered to give you control over the outcome of the pregnancy if we date exclusively and care for each other, correct? Correct. It was just one thought on one day, and I took that away after, yes. And this is the exact same statement that you made to Mr. Gillespie back in July of 2021, isn't it? Oh, I have no idea what statement I made to Mr. Gillespie, but both pregnancies have been medically proven and I have the documentation and sent it. But Ms. Owens, Ms. Owens, all right, so I, we I can't keep everyone records. talking over each other. I, I sent the HIPAA records, I, I released my HIPAA records. Ms. Owens, there's no question before you. Your Honor, I'm asking the court to strike this, these statements. All right, so let's try I, I to just answer the question. If you I, I don't know what I said. Okay, so if you don't remember, just say I don't know what I said. I don't know. Uh, that if I said yeah. Okay, I don't there know. we go. Yeah. All right, so but we have one, room for like one more question, and we're going to be doing closing Bug. arguments. And your honor, again, I would just ask that in lieu of closing arguments that I be permitted to ask. I've already done that. Okay. <laughs> we're already at 11.56 at the moment. So, um, and here, Ms. Owens, isn't it true that you alleged you were pregnant with twins with Mr. Gillespie in June of 2021. No, that was an email that he doctored in 2021 that I have already testified about that in the other case. So no, I never said I was pregnant with twins. Can you please take a look? Well. Again, this, is that, this is an exhibit that uh, whatever it is, I'm guessing I know what it is. It was one message that was doctored by Mr. Gillespie that appeared a year into the court case I had with him. Okay. We've already just How come she can claim doctored text messages in emails, uh, but Clayton, Clayton's lawyer can't. That's the fact that I'm not really considering all of that. So let's, uh, let's Mr. Judge, I'm sorry, but you're crazy for not considering this. That's crazy. If I'm the judge in this case, and judges have wide latitude, by the way, she could ask for anything she wants, basically. If a judge wants to know what you did in a previous case, she'll ask and she can get it. If if a lawyer is trying to get say to me, Your Honor, this was done in this exact way, and I have evidence to prove it to somebody else, I'm like, okay, because she's here to defend herself, and so is her lawyer. So if it's not true, you know, you have a chance to to talk to tell me about it. I don't understand this judge at all. 
Uh, although, if we don't get to the end of this, let me just tell you, there's a happy ending. The judge grants the protective order or whatever this is, the harassment order or whatever, against her and finds that Clayton was harassed uh, by all the emails and the threats to go to the press, which she made good on. So my, I can see that my Wi-Fi is very low right now. So just so you know, it has a happy ending. Your Honor, my, my concern here, and, and again, I, 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 I mean this with all due respect, but Ms. Owens has a pattern of behavior here. She has previously made identical allegations in another case. The exhibits that I have today, as supplemental exhibits, all support that the statements she's made to Mr. Eckert are almost identical to statements made to Mr. Gillespie in 2021. This is highly concerning behavior. She has now perjured herself on several occasions during testimony, and I am not being given the opportunity to show the court the documents to support that she is lying under oath. I, I have proven my pregnancy with the records sent to Mr. Eckert. Okay, Mr. No one has asked you a question. We're not testifying right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Quiet. Even if it was true that Ms. Owens did that in the past, which we quiet, are denying. Quiet, quiet. But even if it was true, that has no relation to this specific case. Just because. She even if it was true, it has no relation to this case. Is he high? What drugs is he on? I need to know. I need to know. Even if it's true, it is not relevant. What? Oh, so crazy someplace else, sir. We're all stocked up here. She may have done it before. Doesn't mean she's doing it now. And we have presented evidence showing that she is pregnant. We have presented evidence showing sir, I have why that's she is. False. Uh, no we're we're going to do closing arguments now. So whoever wants to do a closing argument, Serena, go ahead. The judge just wants to go to learn. This <laughs> she's is like, a clear case. Of she's like, my Thai chicken salad is, you know, awaiting me in the refrigerator in my chambers. And I'm just, let's go to closing arguments. The court has seen through all of the exhibits submitted by Mr. Ecker and the additional exhibits that were present, we presented today, that the parties had an encounter in May of 2020. Mr. Eckert did not have sexual intercourse with Ms. Owens. Shortly thereafter, Ms. Owens began claiming she was pregnant with Mr. Eckert's child, with an alleged child. Mr. Eckert repeatedly, from May to today's date, has pleaded with Ms. Owens to stop contacting him. He has blocked her number on several occasions, and she gets a new number and or uses an app to continue contacting him. It has not stopped. Mr. Eckert has lost job opportunities, speaking engagements. He has suffered extreme emotional distress over the claim <laughs> her face <laughs> that are faceless and over her repeated outreach attempts after pleading with her to stop this is the definition of harassment the court's well aware harassment is defined per the statute as a series of acts over any period of time that is directed at a specific person and that would cause a reasonable person to be seriously alarmed annoyed or harassed and the conduct, in fact, seriously alarms, annoys, or harasses the. I'm alarmed, annoyed, and harassed by her too. Just for watching this, can I get one of these orders? And serves no legitimate purpose. Miss Owens has fabricated a pregnancy now twice on two separate occasions. Mr. Eckert is the second victim of. <laughs> Look at her eyes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said I wasn't gonna laugh. I. Uh, at least I said that to myself privately. I was going to try not to laugh at this, but it's hard. It's it's very, very hard. She has provided no medical records to support that she is in fact pregnant. As the court saw for exhibit 46, Your Honor. It it's so hard. Extra large and extra hard. <laughs> not medical records to support a pregnancy. It is merely, and I'd like to draw the court's attention to this. It is a picture of a test completed at Banner on June 1st of 2023 regarding HCG. It does not say it is a positive pregnancy test. Yes, the next it, page, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is not your turn. I'm sorry. It just it does. Okay. It's your not your turn. Stop talking. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Your turn. It is very questionable, as, as a woman who's been pregnant before, that Miss Owens goes to Banner to get a alleged pregnancy test on june 1st and then she never as far as she never goes back to Banner health for any additional testing the next page of this exhibit is simply a screenshot of an upcoming appointment with a dr mccool on monday july 24th 2023 there are no records to support that she is an active patient with dr mccool that he is her 
perinatologist. There's nothing. We just have a screenshot of an appointment that was made, which anyone can do online. The next record, Your Honor, this is now a HCG test from any lab test now in Scottsdale. This is not a positive pregnancy test. This is a positive HCG test. Why is she going to a new provider for a alleged pregnancy test on October 16th? These next two pages of records, Your Honor, are, are it's hard to tell what they are. They look like they are screen grabs of, of an appointment, but it's unclear. It, it's just unclear. At the root of this case, and the reason that Mr. Ecker is fearful, he is scared, is the fact that there has been a fabricated pregnancy. She has participated in several paternity tests, none of which have come back showing any proof or any sign of fetal DNA, Your Honor. If it wasn't for the fact that she has done this before in another case, this is unbelievable. It is, it is very alarming. She lied under oath, and she lied, to, she lied under oath. <laughs> her face. I don't know if she thinks that facial expressions are, are like evidence in court. Like, look at how upset I was at what was being said. <laughs> Oh, but her attorney does need to uh, have a conversation with her. But unfortunately, she doesn't have an attorney anymore because the last one she had just quit. With the last hearing, she's not being truthful today. And my client is legitimately fearful of what else she's capable of. He's asking that this court... He should be legitimately fearful of what she's capable of. Yep. Recognize that he has done everything to handle this appropriately. He has begged and pleaded with her to stop contacting him. There is no... <laughs> reason for these two to have communication, despite what Ms. Owens will say regarding this alleged pregnancy. There is no proven pregnancy at this point. So we are asking that this court find that she has harassed Mr. Eckert from May of 2023 up until today's date, and we're asking that the court find that the injunction against harassment needs to be ordered and maintained. Thank you, Ms. Yes, Your Honor. Now, I would agree with Clayton that Laura's communication with him were alarming, annoying, harassing, if, in fact, Laura wasn't pregnant, and if, in fact, he wasn't responding to her through the over four-month period that she's been pregnant. She is pregnant, and he has been responding. Imagine how this attorney must feel. <laughs> to see, look at the locals is finally catching up with the memes. Uh, okay, Laura's not going to like any of these. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. This is what happens when you go to the media and you tell stories. Uh, that look when they don't believe your lies. <laughs> it's, it's good. Imagine how this attorney feels who had to sit in court and say, she is pregnant, Your Honor. When he reads the, le the recent motion to dismiss that says, uh, our, our client is no longer pregnant. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's all ridiculous. All right, hold on. I'm trying to get back to oh, the hearing. Clayton has not met his burden in this matter. He's claimed that the amount of texts and emails that caused him to be alarmed, annoyed, harassed. Well, for starters, the reason there are so many emails and text messages is because the chosen form of communication between Laura and Clayton was through emails and text messages. And because that was how Clayton wanted them to communicate, not in person, uh, not over the phone, but through emails and text messages. And second, we are talking about a span, again, over, over four months or more. There are going to be a lot of text messages, or messages during that time. There are going to be a lot of emails during that time. Third, he claimed in his petition that he has not responded to Laura and that he had blocked her. Now that is clearly a lie. And Your Honor, I would suggest that misstates the evidence. There is clear evidence to support that the messages are showing from a blocked sender. That is not accurate. Your Honor, some of those messages may have been blocked, but there are other communications in the exhibit, in Clinton's own exhibit, that state, that show that he did respond to my client, whether it be in emails or text messages, and we provided those uh, some of those exhibits um, in the ones that were admitted to this court. Now, Laura testified that there was communication even aside from the exhibits that we presented. It's impossible to put all the communication within over four months into a, a, a short hearing, essentially. Now, I want to talk about the content of that communication. All of the communication from my client to Clayton 
was meant for legitimate purposes and not to annoy him, not to harass him, not to alarm him. Almost all communication between Lauren Clayton was for the purposes of the pregnancy and paternity. The only other sort of communication from my client toward Clayton was in relation to the post that he put online when my client would receive harassing messages from Clayton's fans and his followers. So the communication around that time, call it August, September, was toward Clayton asking him to take those different things down so that my client wouldn't be harassed. Throughout this entire time since May, Clayton has never been clear with what he's wanted to do. He's been wishy-washy the entire time. First, he didn't believe that my client was pregnant. So she sent him proof and she sent him proof again. He wanted numerous forms of proof. You saw in our exhibit, the video of Ms. Owen pregnant. That was a video that Clayton asked my client to send to him. How can you ask someone to send you proof of their pregnancy and then now call it harassment? Now say that you're alarmed. Now say that you're annoyed. Now say that you're harassed. That doesn't make any sense. He was also wishy-washy about what should be done with the unborn children. And we're talking about at the beginning, around May, June. Should these children, should she have the children? Should they be aborted? Are we going to give them up for adoption? Am I going to have sole custody? Is she going to have sole custody? He was never consistent with what he wanted. I'm sure that he was, I'm sure maybe he thought one thing one day and maybe he thought something else another day. And then he thought back to the, we didn't know what he wanted. And that was communication that was going both ways, back and forth between Clayton and Lauren. Again, he hasn't been consistent. And that is what the root of this problem is. That is why there's so many communications back and forth. Had this been done in person, had they chosen to meet up physically or talk over the phone, things wouldn't get lost in, in translation through email, through text. But that's how they chose, that's how Clayton chose how he wanted communication with Laura. And that's what made everything so difficult. During this time period, Laura actually had to hire another attorney to help facilitate paternity testing. That didn't work, so then Laura had to file a, a matter in, out of the family court Dr. to create Murray, a parent complaint. These are not evidence at this time. These are exhibits that Mr. Lopez did not get to present. I think she testified that she filed a paternity lawsuit. And they did not have, neither of them, my client nor Clayton, have had an attorney in that family matter, so they are forced to communicate with each other because they needed me and confer. They needed to submit a resolution plan, so there's going to be text and communications back and forth from the two of them. Everything, again, everything that you've heard during, uh, whether it was our case in chief or the petitioner's case in chief, this is a snapshot of what has happened over the course of over four months. We were not able to present everything. All communications between my client and Clayton were for legitimate purposes. Again, not to harass them. Look at the exhibits. Look at the ones that Clayton submitted. There are clear exhibits that show that he was sending messages to her. We had submitted um, exhibits showing that uh, Clayton had been communicating with her. So the fact that in the petition itself states that he had not responded to her, that, that's completely untrue. He had indicated in his petition that my client had harassed him. Well, that's not what happened. Who was the one that was posting videos online and getting harassed? Clayton was posting the videos. My client was getting harassed. Not one communication. There wasn't one communication that indicated after they had been in communication since May. Since then, there was no communications that were sent to my client telling my client, stop texting me. Stop emailing me. Stop calling me. Not one. They presented one exhibit that shows one message that indicated that, oh, I'm, I may call the police. Something like that. It seems like he might be worried. But since then, he had been communicating with my client. So, again, you can't say that you are being alarmed and no harassed and then going ahead and then emailing my client, texting my client. And, again, for all of those reasons, I think that the communication between my, my client and Mr. Eckerd were for legitimate purposes for the to determine pregnancy itself, moving into determining paternity itself, to trying to schedule paternity testing with the attorney, to the family court matter, and, and, and to today. And so for all those reasons, we're requesting that this be dismissed. Thank you. Your Honor, in rebuttal, none of the communication from Ms. Owens to Clayton has been for a legitimate purpose. As the court has heard today, it is clear there has been no DNA test or test of any kind to support that she is allegedly pregnant with Mr. Eckert's twin. There is no reason for these parties to communicate. What Mr. Lopez is proposing is that if you block someone, but they find another way to contact you, and then you tell them you still don't want to talk to them in a polite email or a polite message, <laughs> that's then quite a face. that's not harassment. That is the epitome of harassment, Your Honor. 
the court has received exhibits in the first hearing from Mr. Eckert. Every time Clayton's lawyer speaks, Laura can't control her face. Oh, it's funny. Supporting that, she would find other avenues to communicate with him after he had blocked her. Again, it is Mr. Eckert's position that there is no, that this pregnancy has been fabricated. And I want to be clear on this, Your Honor. It's possible that Ms. Owens is pregnant, but it's my client's position that he did not have sexual intercourse with her and he, she is not pregnant with his alleged twin. And that is the root of the issue here. There has been no support for this alleged pregnancy. And if she was pregnant, because now she's claiming she isn't pregnant any longer, we need to know where are the babies? What happened to the babies? According to Arizona law, after 20 weeks, you need fetal death certificates and a record of those deaths, whether the deaths occurred through termination or the deaths occurred through miscarriage, they would be recorded as a matter of law, Ms. Owens. So where are the death certificates? And there is no way that Clayton is going to let this go without demanding those death certificates. And, and he shouldn't. If the babies existed, he had rights to them. And th there needs to be an investigation into what happened. Other than her attempt to show the court and or Mr. Eckert a picture of her alleged pregnancy, which again, we suspect may still be fabricated. So there has been no legitimate purpose to her communication other than to harass Mr. Eckert to try to force a relationship on him. She told Mr. Eckert on multiple occasions that she was going to force him to communicate with her, whether he wanted to or not. And he has been- By the way, she filed a motion in court to make him, commun make him communicate with her. It's on the Maricopa County uh, docket. She filed, she actually filed a, some kind of legal document to force him to communicate with her. So this, this face she's making about what, who, me, it's literally on the docket that she did this, that she put an order in to make him communicate with her. Been clear. He does not want any additional communication from her. All right, thank you. So um, as I stated when we first started this hearing, um, I'm not making- We are an hour and 18 minutes into this. She has been chugging Monster the entire time and hasn't asked for one bathroom break. Pregnant with twins, 24 weeks. Who thinks that that's legitimate? Not one bathroom break. Unless she's wearing an adult diaper, I call bullshit. Bullshit. Total bullshit. A determination as to whether or not she's pregnant or not. That is a family court matter. That case is pending before the family court. The testing or whatever is going to happen is a result of that. So I'm not making a decision and a determination today whether or not there is a uh, valid or invalid pregnancy. I understand Mr. Record's position is there isn't. I understand her position is there is. But that's where we are at the moment. With regards to the evidence and the communication, the court at this time does find there were a series of events that were aimed at the uh, plaintiff that would cause a reasonable person to be alarmed and annoyed or harassed, that she, he was in fact alarmed and annoyed or harassed. I do find they did not serve a legitimate purpose. Messages that have been sent, one, he blocked her on numerous occasions. She even said in the blocking communication, can you unblock me so I can unblock you again? I got a new number and then there's another new number. I think that's clear that he does not wish to have communication. The nature of the communication, while maybe surrounds the pregnancy, the communications that I have a lot of concerns with are the ones where she's trying to make offers to him to continue a relationship that she is trying to facilitate. If you do this, then I'll give you this. Uh, those kinds of messages are of the nature that are harassing and can be viewed as alarm alarming, annoying, or harassing. Um, there are a number of messages that were admitted that are attempts that I, I view kind of almost as trying to you know, get him to do and agree to things that are not necessarily, you know, it's not like we said, hey, can you take a paternity test? And he said, no, hey, you know, can you reconsider? I want to do a paternity test. And then I went and filed a lawsuit because she wouldn't do it. I mean, that's one thing. 500 emails back and forth or messages, I'll say text messages and emails over that period of time to try to clarify and do that it, it is, is beyond uh, what was necessary to be able to communicate those things. There were a number of threats to go to the media 
which were other additional attempts to try to use the media as manipulation or the threat to go to the media as manipulation. I find those to be uh, alarming, annoying, or harassing. So I am going to grant the injunction at this time. The injunction was, uh, is going to prevent any communication outside of legal, the legal process uh, and specifically a legal process and court hearings. Um, so I am going to grant the injunction. And so uh, I will find the granted injunction today. Um, and then I know Ms. Owens isn't present, but we can give uh, a copy of the signed injunction, obviously, to Mr. Lopez uh, today. Uh, but whether or not ultimately she needs to be served with it uh, so that uh, the service of the injunction is appropriate will go into effect once the injunction is served upon her. It would remain in effect uh, for a period of one year. This was the hearing that she uh, had uh, as a result of that. So there's not an additional time to request an additional hearing. And you guys want to wait for a few minutes, I'll find uh, an order. If there were exhibits that you did not offer that you wish to have returned to you, you can let the clerk know and she can move those back. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that basically concludes that. The judge found there was reason to uh, find that there was harassment against Clayton Eckert by Laura Owens. Um, look, Laura, all I can say is there are better ways to live your life than whatever it is you're doing. And the, the faster you become quiet and go away, <laughs> the faster this everyone forgets what happened here. Um, don't start none, won't be none. That is a motto that you should start living by as soon as possible. Um, I'll be following this case, obviously. Dave Neal will be uh, coming onto the program tomorrow at 11 a.m. We're going to talk about what he's been through uh, because uh, Owens is now suing him uh, for harassment and cyberbullying, which of course never happened. He's just a reporter reporting public documents in the case, just like I am. There is no harassment, no defamation, no nothing uh, that a person who has put themselves out in the public sphere uh, in a way like this through court documents can claim. There's just nothing there. And while it's true that she can punish him by dragging him through uh, court, making him get an attorney and all of that, um, she can't prevail. She cannot prevail. Uh, and it will not be a punishment for me to go to court or get a lawyer. But my sister's a lawyer. Like, it will not be a punishment for me, Laura. It's fun. So <laughs> whatever. Like I said, my email is available. You may contact me at any time. But just know that that comes with uh, the the warning that it will be released to the public in full. And I will talk about it. I will read it online. Uh, anything that you send is going to be open to public scrutiny and transparency. If you do have some kind of evidence that you were pregnant and you want to talk about what happened to the babies and you have death certificates and all of that, um, sure, send them on over. I'm, I'm happy to see it, happy to, happy to set the record straight if that's the case. Otherwise, uh, I think you should just stop. That's what I think. I think you should stop. So tomorrow, Dave Neal is going to come and talk about what he has been through um, for just covering this case. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Bachelor Nation and the, uh, well, the media, the entertainment media and their cowardly attitude towards this. You know, they were fine covering it when it was an anonymous accuser accusing Clayton Eckert of these things. They were ready to jump on that. But the minute that it came out that, uh-oh, the accuser doesn't exactly have her story lined up and there are things that don't add up, they quit talking about it and they haven't wanted to cover it. So I think that that's something I really want to focus on, too, is why are these uh, this particular arm of the media and entertainment media so unwilling to cover a story when it turns out that the female may be the abuser? It's the same thing with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. You know, I, I covered that case. It was huge. And there are still people out there claiming that Amber Heard is the victim in all of this. It's like, are you, did you watch the evidence? Did you see the trial? And there, there was, the media didn't want to report that story. And we proved that over and over again. Me and Tug and all of the, the uh, Ricada Law, all of the YouTubers who covered the trial in on LawTube 
all saw it in the way that the public did, right? Because the public was, was like, we can see that Amber Heard is lying and uh, she should lose this case. The media on NBC with Kat Tenbarge and that awful Taylor Lorenz and the LA Times, I think it was, all of those media people in the mainstream press wanted one story and one story only. And that story was that that women are the victims. Women are victims. They're always the victims of domestic violence. They're always the victims of these things. And they ignored evidence that was presented in court. They ignored very obvious evidence that Amber Heard was lying in order to push their narrative that she was a victim of some kind of abuse. And that has happened again. And we're not going to let the media get away with that here. We're not going to let that happen. I'm not going to let that happen. You know, you know me, you know my channel. I'm constantly on the lookout for fake news. You are fake news. And there is fake news all over this story. I mean, there's, and especially cowardly news. I need a button that, that says cowardly news. It's like the same reason why they didn't want to cover Epstein. You know, wasn't it a reporter at NBC who came out after, after the Epstein scandal broke and said, we knew about this. They wouldn't let me play it. Do you know how many stories that happens to in the news? Do you know how many producers say, nope, not that one? And that's what happened in this case. That happened in this case. Media decided, nope, not this one. We're not going to tell this one. They, they were happy to tell it when it was anonymous accuser uh, comes out against Clayton Eckert. They were happy He's to do that. He's a white guy. He's got privilege. He's, you know, uh, semi-famous and... The Me Too movement says you just believe women, you just print whatever garbage allegations there are, uh, and we don't need evidence. We just need her word. And I, I, I disagree. And I'm always on the lookout for these stories where I think the media is misleading you. And I hope that going forward, as of this week, when this is breaking all over the place now, the real facts of this case, that mainstream media will feel, find the courage and join team balls and just report the facts. The facts of this case are very clear. There are no babies, according to Owens herself. Now we need to find out, well, what happened to the babies? Did they exist or didn't they exist? If they did exist, we need to know what happened and where are the death certificates. And it, because there's a matter of law in Arizona, people go to jail for disposing of a corpse or any of that stuff. Uh, you know, if that happened here, we need to find out. And if there were no babies, this needs to be exposed. It is not okay to allege false allegations for any reason whatsoever. Uh, yes, M. Young, that is the correct spelling, E-C-H-A-R-D. That's correct. Uh, those of you, so I've been finding a lot of good information on Reddit on our justice, uh, justice for Clayton. I would suggest that you visit there. Also go and, uh, subscribe to Dave Neal. He's doing wonderful work on this and he's been out there for by himself for way too long, way too long. Um, and he's been facing a lot of harassment because of it. And he needs he needs the extra support, so I would I would highly recommend that you guys go over there and support Dave. Send him some encouraging messages. Uh, that he he's been very very uh, accurate on all of this, and like he's been dogged about it. And good for him, good for him, because he saw something wrong and he said something, and that's really hard. Why do I sound like, what do you mean I sounded like I was raised on speaking spell? Well, I was. I had one of those. What did I say? <laughs> what did I say that sounded like speaking spell? Oh, man. Um, yeah. All right. So tomorrow, 11 a.m., be here for Dave Neal. Because Dave is, oh, when I was spelling the word. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so be here for Dave Neal. That's tomorrow. Uh, I, I know that I wish nothing but the best for everybody involved in this case. And the best thing would be to tell the truth. It's always best to tell the truth. The truth needs to prevail. And hopefully uh, Ms. Owens can learn this lesson and, you know, seek out some professional help and find ways to live in truth and only speak the truth and not use our court system to for revenge or anything else. Uh, <laughs> 
that it is not intended for. All right, let's see. Where's my show end? What do I want to tell you guys? Follow me on locals, meganfox.locals.com. You can have the uh, promo code Maya, M-A-Y-A, uh, for a discount. Also, on Thursday, I will be talking. So we're going to do True Crime Thursday uh, with Jenny Riley. She's the mom of Samuel Clemens, who is a, a murder victim by a woman. And the media didn't want to talk about that either. So we're going to talk to her on Thursday. Uh, I'm excited about that. I wrote about that several months ago and reached out to her, but didn't hear from her. And then she just recently contacted me and she's ready to talk and she has things to say. And it's going to be a really interesting interview. So I would highly recommend it. Uh, and Friday night at 7.30, Sean McMillan's going to be back on this program. You know, Sean, he's a CPS lawyer. He, he goes after CPS and CPS corruption and corrupt hospitals that coordinate with CPS to take children from families unlawfully. Uh, he is going to be reading through part two of his lawsuit against the new lawsuit against it's Meyer versus Rady Children's Hospital in California. We're going to finish that up. And then I'm going to redirect you to his stream where you're going to get to watch him depose these bad actors in CPS. It's so much fun. His channel is so great. It's Caps and Stems Law. Make sure you get over there. And uh, did I miss, I did miss some super chats and I'm sorry. Let me go back to those. If there is a super chat that I don't read, it's simply because uh, it might be, well, I'll explain it later at another time, but if don't get upset if your super chat doesn't get read today. Uh, Lucentile wants to know, has Flux created a detailed ho name, not a ho name table? I don't know, but you should really have her get on that because that would be very helpful uh, for those of us who don't know. Uh, Duncan Idaho, thanks to the super chat, says, Your Honor, I'd also like to admit my 55 into evidence. What is that? What's a 50? What's an at 55? <laughs> You're, and she says, I'll allow it. This judge seems to allow everything. And I don't know why. What's a 55? Am I not getting it? And then Duncan Idaho again says she's got a team of DNA scientists working on those tests. It's an ongoing thing. It's science. Yes, that's why it's not back yet, apparently, and why it got lost in the mail. Duncan Idaho, thanks to the Super Chat, says she should have been forced to appear in court. If you don't submit yourself physically to the jurisdiction of the court and you're just on a Zoom call, nothing can stop you from being disruptive. Well, that is true. And I also have to say, um, her excuse for it was i have a a i have a uh a, a restraining order against the against clayton but when you're in a court of law you're protected by bailiffs and stuff so i'm not sure that that applies but that's a question for a lawyer that would be a really good question for a lawyer because i don't know uh joss girl super chat says will you cover karen reed i have been looking into karen reed and i know you guys are super interested in it i just don't know if i have the time to do it but that is a case with a lot of questions i mean a lot i have been like following what's going on with like turtle boy and the, his arrest which is unbelievable unbelievable that he got arrested for so-called witness intimidation or whatever i kind of agree with him he's a reporter he has a right to go to a soccer game where there's a witness for, and ask questions that it's a free country. And I don't see how that can be seen as witness intimidation. I don't think that he's going to lose that case. Uh, and it does start to look more and more like a cover-up. I I've looked at the facts of the case and I'm confused. I'm confused how they, how the uh, state came up with a case against Karen Reed. I, it's very unclear to me. What I think the biggest question in the Karen Reed case is, how do you find a dead police officer outside of a house party and you never search the house? Since then, the house has been sold. The carpets were replaced. Everything was remodeled. The dog was gotten rid of. I'm, I'm so confused as to how the police allowed that to happen. They never did a search of the house. If I'm on that jury, that's enough reasonable uh, doubt to say not guilty. That's it. That's all I need to hear that the police did not search that house. That's, un that's incredible to me. That's unless I'm missing something. Um, that's incredible to me. So yeah, cherry pow pow. Uh, welcome to the Fox den. Thanks for being a member. Appreciate you. And I can't, okay. I think I got to all of them. Looks like a lot of you are confused as well about the Karen Reed case. <laughs> You know what, MG Law? There's corruption everywhere. 
everywhere there's corruption. It's like we just found out that in Georgia, the uh, prosecutor who's going after Donald Trump is sleeping with the special prosecutor. So the DA is sleeping with the special prosecutor who she hired, who has never had a, a experience in a RICO case trying the biggest RICO case in the state's history. And she's given him a million dollars. Wow. I mean, it's, I don't know. The corruption is just everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Uh, and I will leave you with this. I asked for this specifically. This is so funny. Um, locals <laughs> made me a great meme. I asked them for this meme because I think this one is really clever. It's fetal attraction, folks. Fetal attraction starring Clayton Eckert and Laura Owens. Fetal attraction. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you should do is you go home tonight and you should read or watch this movie whatever you're doing watch this movie again i think the current generation has not been scared enough by this movie and they need to go and watch it because this is this can happen in real life it really can it really can um all right melanie little is covering what is she covering the uh karen reed case oh i'm sorry that i scared your cat with the fox sound i didn't mean to it is a terrifying sound. I Foxes just sound, that's what they sound like. I went and looked up a fox laughing because everyone was like, why don't you use the laughing? That was scarier, to tell you the truth. It was scarier. <laughs> yeah, maybe on Locals we should watch Fatal Attraction. <laughs> we'll see, you guys. We'll see. All right. Uh, I am going to get out of here now. I got to go and make snacks for Hangry and for the other kids and see what's going on, make some dinner plans. And just basically unwind after all of this. But you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you later. I was lost, my world is near its end. I almost felt my head is full of a million choices. I am alive, I'm not here to pretend. Storming in there with yeah. a string of garlic and some holy water. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. May the power yeah, of Christ I'm compel young. you. No, I don't. You realized this house was infested with sucky business. <laughs> Yes. Suck you, you loaders. No wonder he said that. drown her before you burn <laughs> her. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, uh, your next witness? Now witness I know why you drown her. Laces. That is also in Romania. <laughs> <laughs> that is 